House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says her chamber is ready to vote today to avoid a government shutdown. Without action, federal agencies will run out of money by Friday at midnight. The temporary deal extends funding for a few months, but it is unclear if it will receive 60 votes in the Senate. And this isn't the only crucial December deadline. In less than two weeks, the government is likely to default on its bills unless the debt ceiling is raised or suspended. Congress also has to pass the annual defense bill, and Democrats want to send the social and climate spending package to the president's desk by Christmas. To help untangle all of these deadlines on the Hill, I want to bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian. Hi, Nicole. Welcome. Let's begin with the deal to avoid a government shutdown tomorrow. What details do we know about it and what happens next? So at this point, uh, the House appears poised to move forward with that continuing resolution to advance it. It just came out of the Rules Committee. It passed there, which means that is the really the final step before it hits the House floor. Uh, but at this point, uh, you know, the House more than likely will go on and pass this short term measure, which will fund the government through February 18th. So uh, not a lot of time. And even the head of the Appropriations Committee in the House said, you know, that she uh, wished that they they could actually come to an agreement on something more substantial. Keep in mind, part of the reason they have to do these stopgap measures is because Congress still hasn't agreed on these annual, you know, what you would call an omnibus uh, spending bill. And so uh, the Democrats and Republicans continue to be at odds over some of that. And then those negotiations have been ongoing. So in the interim, they have to kind of keep doing these stopgap measures. So uh, the chairwoman, uh, Deloro, who oversees the appropriations process said she lamented that, that, you know, she really wished they could uh, move ahead with something more uh, substantial, as I said. But once this clears the House, it'll come over to the Senate. At this point, there have been some Republicans threatening to block it uh, out of concern and criticism for uh, vaccine mandates that have been imposed by the Biden administration. But uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell made clear that uh, people shouldn't worry that there will be a shutdown, that he doesn't think that will ultimately happen. All right, so on to another deadline, deadline number two. Has there been any progress made on the debt limit or defense spending bill? Well, that's another thing, you know, in terms of Minority Leader McConnell, as far as the debt ceiling is concerned, he's kind of kept his cards close to the vest. So has Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. We know the two of them have been talking, and for the most part, they both held their fire on this. You'll recall in the fall, you know, they really were at odds, and Mitch McConnell made clear that Republicans were not going to help Democrats, uh, you know, lift the debt ceiling. Ultimately, you know, there was that short-term deal that kind of kicked the can down the road until uh, now, and uh, Secretary Yellen made clear uh, that really Treasury can't do too much more past December 15th. So uh, it remains to be seen uh, whether or not uh, Leader Schumer, Leader McConnell can come to an agreement over uh, the debt ceiling. Uh, you know, they don't seem uh, alarmed at this point, but they also haven't provided a lot of details about the path forward. So that is something that we continue to watch. And as for that defense spending bill, you know, it continues to uh, face a, a number of hiccups and blockades, primarily from uh, Senate Republicans. Uh, a lot of this has to do with the amendment process. And keep in mind, this defense spending bill is usually, you know, something relatively routine that passes Congress every year. It sets defense policy. It also sets top lines for spending uh, in the Defense Department. But it has hundreds of amendments. And so, you know, therein has uh, lied some of the issues and, and problems in terms of trying to advance it. So uh, because of that, that has kind of like slowed the calendar for everything else. Uh, but uh, again, Leader Schumer hopes that, you know, ultimately they can kind of clear whatever hurdles uh, with Republicans on this so that they can move forward and ultimately pass it. A lot to be done in very little time. And Nicole, I want to ask you now about the January 6th panel, which advanced a contempt of Congress charge against Trump ally Jeffrey Clark yesterday. What was the select committee's reasoning here and when could this go to a full House vote? So uh, right now that full House vote is temporarily on hold. You know, basically Jeffrey Clark and his attorney came in with this 11th hour request uh, and a letter to the committee uh, in essence where uh, Jeffrey Clark agreed to appear for another deposition, although he has indicated he will likely plead the fifth. But, uh, you know, because of that request, uh, the committee is granting that. They are allowing him to appear before uh, the panel once again. 
you recall, the last time that he did a couple weeks back, uh, he and his attorney really didn't answer a lot of questions from the committee, and so that's why they moved forward with this contempt report, because they feel that he wasn't uh, cooperating. But uh, now that it appears he'll try to appear again, we believe uh, sometime this weekend uh, that they will give him an opportunity to do that. And so for now, they are putting a hold on this contempt vote, even though it came out of the January 6th Select Committee and it passed. Uh, at this point, they're going to see how things go with Jeffrey Clark before uh, deciding ultimately if this will advance to the full uh, House floor for a vote. And of course, as you have reported, former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows is cooperating with the investigation on a limited basis. Do we have more information on how exactly he is engaging with the panel? You know, not much other than the standpoint of uh, Chairman Benny Thompson, who has acknowledged and who acknowledged earlier this week in a statement that uh, he and his team have produced a number of records uh, to the committee and that he has agreed to appear for a deposition, which is something he was supposed to also do a couple of weeks back that didn't happen. Uh, so we do expect that to happen in relatively short order. But, uh, you know, the committee really is interested in getting some level of cooperation and engagement engagement from Mark Meadows, and I think that's why you see them kind of working with him. Uh, not only is he a former member of Congress, but he could hold a lot of valuable information that this committee is after. At the end of the day, they just want to know what was going on in the White House on January 6th. What was the president doing? And there's really no better person to answer that than the former president's chief of staff. All right, Nicole Killian on Capitol Hill. Thank you so much. You bet.